So we're going to look at the local frame, which I referenced the last uh, section. So it's going to be a local frame for a curve. So our curve will still be R of T at T0. So we're going to call this the T N B frame. We already saw T and N, and I already told you what B is going to be. So this is also called the Frenet frame. So we'll draw a curve. Now there'll be a point on the curve. So there's going to be three components here. So this first one is velocity, but we've normalized it. So it shouldn't depend on how fast you're going. So it's unit velocity. Then there's how your velocity is changing. So we're in this situation making a left turn. So our new velocity is going to be to the left of this arrow. So that means our unit change, it's always perpendicular. It's going to go that direction. So that's n. And we're always normalizing these. So they're all going to have magnitude 1. And then <clears throat> take your first finger is going to be t. Your middle finger is n. This is your right hand. We're going to do the right hand rule. So middle finger is t. I have to turn my shoulder a little bit from the way I drew it. But middle finger is n. And then b is going to point directly up. So if this curve is on your table, your B is going to point upwards. So how do we draw that? Just do your best. I'm supposed to go straight up. So the way I draw that cross product, the fact that they're all perpendicular, I'm just putting in two right angle measures right there to show that that's perpendicular to N and B. Oop, N and T. So this is our B, which is T cross N. So let's get through some notation. So a lot of this will be review. So we'll start with our velocity V, that's R dot. Or dr over dt, which we could write as dr over ds, ds over dt, and dr over ds is t times ds over dt. And in this case, t is our unit velocity or unit tangent. And then ds dt is how speed changes over time. Well, if you change the position, but this will be your speed. So if you multiply the unit direction you're going by your speed, you'll get your actual velocity vector. So if you're going really fast, your velocity is a big number, so you're going to multiply your unit vector by the big number, and that's your velocity. If you're going really slow, your speed's small, you'll go the same direction, but a much shorter vector in that direction. So that's all velocity. And how did we compute t from before? So it was V over magnitude V, which of course is R dot over magnitude R dot. So computationally, that's how you get your T. <clears throat> so let's look at acceleration now. So we're using letter A for that. So it's a derivative of your velocity which we could write as ddt of v. And now we're going to use the velocity from the top of the board, the rightmost uh, version. And we're just going to rewrite it down here. So 
So let's take a notation timeout real quick to talk about derivative operators, and then we'll come back and look at all this again. So if you see d over dt, that's what's called an operator because it's waiting to take a t derivative of whatever's to the right. So d, d, d dt, that says take the t derivative of what is to the right. So it acts just like a function. It just acts on whatever is to the right of it. So I'm going to circle all the operators on the last line, the acceleration line here. dv over dt is not an operator it's already operated. So dv over dt tells you how v changes as t changes. So it's already been operated on right there. So I could write it as d dt of v, where this is the operator that's going to operate on v. And after it operates, we write it just like it is above right there. So this is important because we're about to <clears throat> operate ddt on what's to the right. So we're about to do that operation right there. So just considering this, there's two pieces over here on the right side, and they're multiplied together. So we're going to take a t derivative of a product, so we have a product rule. So this is t prime, and I'll still use the d, so this is dt d little t times ds dt plus t times d dt of ds dt. So any questions on that derivative we just took right there? So let's rewrite the second one. I'm going to write it as ddt, ddt of s. So I'm just writing ds dt as ddt of s. So now I'm going to bring that last term to the front. <clears throat> so just reading it, we're taking a second t derivative of s. So there's a few ways to write it. I'm going to write it as d dt. Well, let's use the really bad notation that your book uses. So this is, right here, we're squaring the ddt operator. So that's a little bit weird, but it's exactly what I have squiggled above. It's the ddt ddt of s times t plus 
I'm going to bring the DSDT to the front here. And we're going to multiply it by, I'm going to use the chain rule when I rewrite this. Oops. I'm going to rewrite this as DT DS times DS DT. So I applied the chain rule on DT DT. And the way you can see that, the DS's cancel out and you have DT DT right there. You won't have to go through all these steps yourself. I'm just going through them super slow. All right, from here, and these are all products here. So why did we do that? Well, the motivation was now we have a term that's repeated, so we can write that term squared. So we're just squaring those two, or multiplying those two together, writing it as squared. And the last thing, dt over ds, is also known as kappa times n. We'll look at that again in a second. Uh, D, just the D, yeah, so I'll write that out in a second. So this is from the fact that N is one over kappa DTDS, which is DT over D little t divided by D big T over, oh, that's not right, oh, over the magnitude. All right, so why in the world are we doing all this? <clears throat> What this does, it lets us write the acceleration in terms of how much acceleration is happening in the direction we're traveling, how much acceleration is happening in the normal direction, the direction we're not traveling. So it lets us decompose acceleration into acceleration in the direction we're moving versus acceleration rotationally, so sideways. So let's go back to look at that curve again. I drew all the normal or all the normalized tan uh, velocity acceleration here. But let's say you're actually driving around on this race course. If you're going around a turn, unless your velocity is constant, or, or unless your speed's constant, your acceleration is going to change in the direction you're traveling as well. So if you're starting to turn, you may be slowing down while you're turning. So your velocity in the direction you're traveling is going to actually be shorter because you're slowing down. Uh, but you're also going to be accelerating towards the center of the turn. Uh, when you're coming out of the turn, you're probably going to be accelerating, so you'll have a longer velocity in that direction. So this just lets you measure acceleration in terms of the direction you're traveling and the direction you're going to be turning. And we'll just rewrite these. So 
So we'll call that acceleration in the tangential component, AT, plus acceleration in the normal component, times N. And these are both scalars. Where AT is D squared S over DT squared. And AN, just reading above, is kappa times ds over dt squared. And so AT is the tangential component. And then AN is the normal component. So I'll just write down some real life example. So tangential component will be the acceleration or brakes, or I should say gas or brakes. And normal component is what you would do with your steering wheel or your handlebars as you're turning. So those are the accelerations you would introduce with your gas or your brakes versus the acceleration you introduce with your steering wheel as you're actually turning. So just think about driving and those are your two. You can either hit the, accelerate, the gas or the brakes and you'll feel acceleration forward or backward. And then if you turn with your steering wheel, you'll feel the acceleration, uh, the sideways acceleration. S is your position along the, uh, it's sort of your odometer, how far you've traveled. So it's like the normal R? DS over DT is your speed, how your distance travels changed over time. So S would be the magnitude of R, and that would be the magnitude of velocity. So DS over DT is speed. S, the, just the regular S of T function, is distance traveled so far. <clears throat> now you might think, how does that differ from R? R is your position at time, versus S of T is how far you've traveled so far. No, computing S of T is hard. It's really hard if you have your R function. So it's interval from T0 to T, uh, R dot tau magnitude D, D tau. So it's not easy to compute S of T. So S of T is distance traveled, and R of T is position. So let's look again at the curve. <clears throat> I'm going to pick the point at the very bottom so that at least my tangential component will be exactly horizontal when I draw it. So that's T right there, N is going to go up. 
So let's say our actual acceleration, is acceleration green? Yeah. All right, so we'll go, let's say our actual acceleration is like this right here. What can you say about, are we speeding up or slowing down as we're turning? How would we know if we're slowing down or speeding up from just this information? Is our next velocity going to be more or less than our current velocity? I don't even, I didn't even write down the current velocity. What would acceleration look like if I was not speeding up or slowing down? If, if I had zero acceleration, I'd be going straight. I would not be turning anymore. I still want to be turning. I don't want to fall off the road. But I want my speed to be constant. What would the acceleration arrow look like if my speed was constant, but I'm still turning the corner here? It would be pointing in the normal direction. So if we're not changing speed, acceleration points in the normal direction. It's not going to add or subtract from velocity. So this is what it would look like if we're doing a constant speed around the turn. Now as to how long A needs to be, that actually depends on your current speed. Just like in a car, the faster you drive, the more acceleration you're going to experience going around a turn, even if your speed is constant. So just go down Schuber Road, go fast, You'll get thrown around in the car, go slow. But if your speed is constant, you'll experience the same acceleration. It'll just be a lower magnitude. So now, let's say your acceleration is not in exactly in the direction of n. Now your acceleration looks like this. Are we speeding up or slowing down? So actually speeding up. Because our new velocity, if you think of projections, we're going to gain velocity here. Because it tells us our new velocity is going to be longer than our original velocity vector. So we're hitting the gas right now in the car as we're going around a turn. That's what it tells us right here. So remember, t equals direction of travel. And there is some component of our acceleration that's going with the direction we're moving. So that means we're accelerating right now. What would a deceleration, if we want to still go around the same turn, but I want my speed to decrease? So here would be decelerating around the turn. It would look like this. So your acceleration is going to be counter to the direction you're moving. So that would be hitting the brakes going around the turn. So any questions on the difference in those two right there? So if I draw this arrow right here, this would be a little t times t. So it's the acceleration component in the tangential direction times the vector t right there. There's an orthogonal component, which will be going directly upwards here. It's the orthogonal projection going across the top here. So that green vector, let's move the n label. That green vector will be a n times n. So that's the acceleration that your turning is going to introduce. So your tires and your steering wheel and all that, the sideways acceleration you experience going around the turn. Now, of course, when you're in a car and you're making a left turn, it feels like you're being pushed to the right, and that's because the car is accelerating to the left and your body's trying to go straight. That's why it feels the opposite of the way it, the way it actually works. So your car is accelerating to the inside as your body is not. So that's, what, that's why everything feels opposite of what's actually happening. So the car is pulling you in to the turn so it feels like you're being thrown outwards. But that's just, you're feeling the inertia. 
All right, so that is how we can decompose the acceleration into basically direction you're traveling and then the opposite, or the acceleration direction. Okay, so let's relate these to acceleration. We can look at the magnitudes of these three vectors of the regular acceleration versus the normal acceleration and the tangential acceleration. And we can use Pythagorean theorem to relate the magnitudes here. So a, let's see, a n squared plus a t squared equals magnitude a squared. I don't have to put magnitudes around an and at because they're already numbers. But a, acceleration's a vector, so I do have to write the magnitude of that. And we'll solve for a n. So a n squared equals magnitude a squared minus a t squared and then square root it. Now you're always going to go plus because it's going to be in the direction your normal already points. So that's why you're always going positive on this right here. It's always with the normal. Uh, if a n was negative, what that really means is your normal should be pointing in the opposite direction. So it's always with the normal. So we'll do, it's probably time for an example. So we're going to find the acceleration where we're going to write it as a t t plus a n n, where our r of t function will be, x coordinate will be cos t plus t sine t, and y will be the same with the minus. All right, so I'm going to write down the order of things you need to compute. So when in doubt, what should you compute first? Derivative. derivative. All right, so start there. That's, of course, velocity. Then take the magnitude of that. Then get t. Then a t, which is the t derivative of the magnitude of v. Then a n, which is written on the top corner of the board. Magnitude a squared minus a t squared. And I'll write, I didn't use a anywhere else, so acceleration is r double dot, or I'll just write v dot. And regular A is velocity dot. And then magnitude A is magnitude V dot. OK. So you could probably not understand anything I said and still compute all these correctly. So I'll give you three minutes on these. There's definitely going to be some product rule happening and some now, there shouldn't be any chain rule, but there definitely are some product rule, and there's going to be a lot of times where cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. That will show up quite a few times.
So any questions on velocity? I know it seems easy, but making sure we got the same cancellation. When you compute this velocity, you should know by now cos t sine t, magnitude is 1. So this is a unit vector that we're looking at right there. I already brought the t outside. So this is going to be uh, square root t times 1. Oh. Wow, this is bad notation. There we go. All right, so I'm taking the magnitude. That lets me bring the t outside as absolute value of t. Now I can say that magnitude is 1 on the right side. So I just get absolute value of t is my uh, magnitude of the velocity. <clears throat> Let's make the assumption t is greater than 0, so I don't need to keep my absolute value around, because otherwise it's going to be annoying. So we're going to assume t is greater than or equal to 0. Well, just greater than 0. So we have 1 over t times t cos t sine t. So the t1 over t cancels, and we get cos t sine t. All right, a t is the derivative of the magnitude. So it's d d t of just the t function, which luckily is 1. a n. Looks like I need to compute the derivative of v before I get this. So I'll put v to the top of the board. So that's d d t of All right, when I compute this, what rule do I need to use? Product rule. If you leave your t distributed inside, that's fine too, but you're going to use the product rule either way. So I'm going to use the product rule written the way I have it here. So derivative of t is 1. Plus t times derivative of cos is negative sine. Derivative of sine is cos. I do have to add these together. I'm going to get cos t minus t sine t comma sine t plus t cos t. So that's acceleration. And then I do need the magnitude of this. So this is probably the most annoying part of this whole process. I have to square both of these terms. So I'm going to need to foil them both out, and it's going to get really ugly before it gets nice. There's nothing, if you look at the acceleration here, there's nothing I can factor out, because there's not, it's cosine and sine mixed, and one of them has a t and the other term doesn't. So there's nothing I can factor out of this right here. That's as good as it's going to get. So I just have to square both of those terms.
All right. What do I get to cancel? There should be two terms that completely annihilate each other. So the 2t, 2t terms wipe each other out to 0, not to 1. What combines to 1? So I got a cos squared t and a sine squared t. So those two add up to one. And then I have t squared sine squared plus t squared cos squared. So that adds up to t squared right there. All right, so that's magnitude of acceleration right there. So we're ready to put all of this, and of course that's magnitude v dot. So we're ready to compute a n right now. So it's square root squared. Minus a t squared minus one squared. So one minus one cancels, we have square root t squared. It does turn to absolute value of t, but we assume t was positive, so that's just regular t. Okay, so there we go, no problem. Easy computations. So you do have to do them in the right order. It looks like I needed the acceleration magnitude before a n, so I would probably on my cheat sheet put the order a little bit different. All right, there should be a few homework problems like this. And the next thing we're going to do is basically compute V by just doing a cross product.